Good morning, my dear students. We shall today discuss the most fundamental and very important uh, concepts in mechanics and without which nobody studies any physics and that is what is known as the Newton's laws of motion. In that we will be studying the first law today. You must have already been uh, aware of this Newton's laws in your lower class also. To put in one word, the Newton was the first man who tried to inquire about the cause of the motion of bodies. Why the bodies are moving, how they are moving, in other words, how you can control the motion of their body, the, the, these bodies, what is the parameter which is the key point in the entire mechanical motion of bodies, how is it to be manipulated or how is that present, is able to do the control there. All these aspects have been discussed by him in his own mind, he gave a thought process for that and ultimately when the apple fell on his head probably the solution was out there. When the apple fell down to the ground, as the story goes, he thought there is something pulling the apple down to the earth. That pull he called as force. Then to define that uh, pull as a force, he has given three laws of motion. And in the three laws, we come across the nature of this force the concept of the force will be clearly given there. The first law tells us in a way, to be given a gist, it tells that the very nature of the force, what is a force, that is explain, explained in the first law. In the second law, it, he will tell you how to quantitatively assess the force, how to quantitatively estimate the force, that is what is given in the second law. In the third law, he tells what is the basic nature of force when it occurs. The very occurrence of force when it takes place, what is the phenomena involved in that. So these are the three laws which are talking about these three aspects of the force, which makes the understanding of the force complete there. Then comes different types of forces. What are the various types of forces? We have also discussed earlier in some time. The weight is one force acting towards the center of gravity of the earth. Because of the mass contained in the body, there is a weight existing there, we said. So weight is a force, friction is a force, normal reaction is a force. I told those points in the earlier module. So the question now is, what exactly is this force? What is a force at all? What is it doing? And why is it happening? This is what we have to answer in this the law, what he says is, in this law what he tells us is, if a body is not moving at all, it is force that is responsible. If the body is moving with constant velocity, it is because of the force that is on it. If the body is moving with an acceleration, it is because of the force on it. There. So if a body moves, you must have an idea of the force acting on that. Yes, the nature of the motion of the body will tell us what is the force acting on the body. The second law will tell you how much is the force, that is a different question. So, let us first understand the law in the basic form as what he has given. He says, every body continues to be in its state of rest unless an external force acts on it. This is what the statement is. Unless there is an external force acting on the body, the body will continue its state. That means state of rest here we said. Similarly, it also says the second part of the law, every body continues to be in a state of motion unless an external force acts. That means when a body is traveling with some particular direction, a particular velocity in one direction, we call uniform motion, we call it then 
it will continue to do so unless an external force acts on that. If an external force acts on that, the motion cannot be uniform like that. It will have a different variety of motion. That means with constant velocity in one direction, the body may not move. These aspects have to be examined now. Let us take the example first. Say there is a body on the table like this. This is at rest. The body is not moving. Why the body is not moving? According to Newton's law, he says, the net force on the body must be zero. Newton's law says, as long as no external force acts, the body continues to be in state of rest. If you examine more detailly, is there no force acting on this body? There are force already. One force is there vertically downwards, that is the weight of the body. And because of the body's contact here on the surface, there is a normal reaction also taking, occurring there at the contact. We have said this earlier. The contact force is called normal reaction. So, these two forces are already there on the body. But net force is 0. That means this force N is equal to W in magnitude. Direction they are opposite. That means if you take these vectors here, these two must be equal to 0. As the equation says, the vector N is equal and opposite to the vector W the force W. So, the normal reaction is upwards vertically, weight is vertically downwards, therefore the body is not moving there. Right? This is what is to be understood. So, suppose the body is not on the table like this, suppose the body is on an inclined plane like this, then what happens? Suppose it is a smooth plane like this, then what happens? The weight of the body will be acting vertically downwards because it is always vertically downwards. The normal reaction what we have told here will take place here also, but it will be occurring at right angles to the plane. That is normal reaction here. You know what happens in the case as this? If the smooth plane is there and the body is kept there on that, it will slide down. It will not be at rest there. With small angle, the smooth plane is there, it has to come down. So, that means the net force on the body is not zero, therefore it is moving down. That is what you try to conclude that. We got that example a bit later again. Let us take this example first. So, in this example what we said is, because the body is at rest, it is not moving. We should say, it is because the body is continuing in its state of rest, as there is no net external force acting on the body. That is the thing to be remembered. Then, take another example now. There is a body on the surface. A smooth surface now here, suppose. And the body is moving now. You apply a force on this body. Because we said, unless a force acts, the body will not move. Just apply a force like this on this and keep pushing the body like that. Suppose it is moving with constant velocity V. Let us say even there is, when the surface is not uh, smooth also, it will like, you can push the body on, the, on that. So, push the body on this. Then you will see the body is moving with a the velocity there in the direction. Suppose you withdraw this force F. Then what happens? The body will move for some time in that direction because there is friction and then it slows down in the process after some time it stops. So, therefore, the motion is not uniform now. In the beginning to start the motion there was an applied force required. When the body is moving there on the surface, there, when you withdraw this force, another force called friction is acting on that body. Then the body has come to rest. So, to move the body on a hard surface and to stop the body after the force is removed, applied force is removed, friction works and in any case force was responsible for the change in the motion of the body. The body has not been at, in motion earlier, then it started moving, then it moved with velocity, then it moved with decreasing velocity and then came to rest. This is all the story what happened in the example what I said. Suppose now you take smooth surface here and you have applied a force and left it. Initially it was at rest, then you pushed it. 
Now what happens? It moves with velocity. The velocity, you are just supposed to give a velocity there and it is going with constant velocity now. Suppose you apply this force continuously on that. The velocity of the body is there V now on that. It acquires a velocity V because of the force applied here. Suppose you apply another force opposite to that now, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. Already the body has acquired some velocity and now you have applied one more force so that both are equal and opposite there. Then once again net force becomes zero here. So net force in this condition is zero here. Then what will happen? The velocity which is there on the body will be carrying the body in its direction continuously like that. That means the body will be in continuous motion with constant velocity. So in this case also net force is zero, in that case also net force is zero. In this case the body is not moving, it is at rest here. In this case it is in motion here with velocity. In both cases net force is zero. This is what has made Newton to conclude that as long as no external net force acts on the body, the body will continue in its state. What is the state? Here it is rest, here it is uniform constant velocity motion. Right? So that is what Newton's law says. So he has given the definition of the force from this now. What is the definition he has given? Force is that which will try, which will create a body, motion in the body which is at rest, which can create a motion in the body at rest. Suppose now on this body you apply a force F. Now the body starts moving like that. It can be moving like that. Then force is that which can make the body change its velocity also. Suppose you apply a force now, only one force is there, the velocity goes on increasing on that. When both equal and opposite force are there, then it, it is moving with constant velocity. Only one force is there, the velocity goes on increasing, that can be seen. That means the velocity, the motion is not uniform now, constant velocity is not there. So force is that which can do all these jobs. So nobody has seen the force, it is something like God. It can do this, it can do that, it can do that, it can do see, you can just go on speaking like that. But what is force means, you cannot say in any other words better than what he has given in the Newton's first law. So force is that which can generate a motion in a body at rest. Force is that which can change the course of motion of a body if it is already in motion. That is what the definition of the force, the concept of force it comes here. Then the question is, why is the body continuing in the absence of a force in a particular state? Why is the body not continuing otherwise when the force acts there? What is the reason for that? That is not directly given in the law, it lies in between the lines there. We understand it this way, see here. You take the example of a body once again, a body like this, you apply a force on that. This force may move the body. Suppose the force is applied like this, on the surface of this body like this it moves. On the other hand, on the same surface, suppose there is a larger body like this. You apply force on this body, same force applied there. This force may not move that body. It may require a greater magnitude of the force to move this body than this. Why is it like that? That will explain us the nature why the body is continuing in its state. Like for example, the mass of the body here is small, the mass of the body here is larger. That is what we can see from the size of it. Yes, suppose like that. Then to move a body of smaller mass, a large force was sufficient enough but the same force is not sufficient to move a body of a larger mass. Why like that? There is some property in the mass which will not allow the force to act on it and get succumbed to the force there. Initially it will try to oppose that. There is a nature to oppose that. When you apply a force here, for example in this you can, it evidently can be seen. When you apply a force on this body, it is not moving immediately. If you want to move the body, you must make your force larger, further, further. So why smaller force could not move it there? 
because the mass, the larger mass of the body there is having a larger sum property, a proper, a larger property than this body, larger thing there, which is trying to resist the attempt of this force. And that property is what is called as inertia. This is what must understand, this word inertia. This is not mentioned in the uh, statement, but it is implied in the statement. Like, every body continues to be in its state. The very sentence says, the body is continuing to be in its state. Why? Because there is no external force acting on that. Well, what is the external force say doing? It says, external force is that which tends to change the force of the body, change the course of the body. That means, it will try to change from rest to motion. It may do it. Is this force not doing that here? It is making that attempt, but still it is not successful in doing so. It is trying to change the body from rest to motion, but that force was not sufficient enough to do it. Therefore, we say there is some property in this. That property is called inertia. So, if that property is large, you require larger force for generating motion in the body. If that property is small, a smaller force is necessary enough for it to move it there. Is it mass? It is that property coming because of the mass of the body. It is not exactly mass. Because there is larger mass, yes, there is larger inertia. Because there is smaller mass, there is smaller inertia. Smaller inertia, smaller force is sufficient. Larger inertia, larger force is required there. But that property is called as inertia. Inertia, very word means inertness, laziness, the uh, unpreparedness for movement. So, every body, every mass will always try to oppose any change that you want to bring in its state. To change it, an attempt is required because without that, it will try to continue in its state always. That is what inertia is. You take the example of a moving lorry. Another example we can give you. A lorry is there, suppose it is moving there. It is moving with a velocity there. Suppose there is no net force acting on the body. The body is moving with constant velocity here. Net force is zero according to Newton's first light is moving now. Now suppose you want to stop this lorry, you have to apply brakes. That means you have to apply force in the opposite direction. To apply the force in the opposite direction, the value of the force required here depends on the mass of the lorry now. The larger the lorry is, the greater the force is required to stop it. The smaller one, easy to stop. A man going on a bicycle, you can, you can just go in front of him and hold the handle, he will stop very easily. You can do it. You can't do the same thing with in, the, in the case of a lorry. It can run over you also. Why? Because this mass is more, like the example here. In this case, the body is already in motion, unlike here, it is in rest, it is in motion. So, the already moving body, which is in motion, can be only stopped or can be changed its course of motion by applying opposite force now. But the force required is of a larger magnitude, because the larger mass, once again, greater inertia here. Inertia is that. Here also it is inertia that is responsible, here also it is inertia that is responsible. But in a way to say that inertia is different from this inertia we say. Why? That inertia is responsible for the body to make it to continue to be at rest. We call it as inertia of rest. In this case the body is already in motion. So it is helplessly in motion. Inertia means helplessly being in the direction, in that motion. And therefore we have this as inertia of motion, we call it. In any case, it is but inertia. Inertia is inability to change its state all by itself. Here from rest to motion, here from motion to rest is all the same. So, by nature it is the same, by quantity it is the same because that is also proportional to mass. This also depends on mass only. Larger the mass, larger the inertia of rest, larger the inertia of motion also. So, that is what is called inertia. Then third thing is, inertia of direction also is there. Another example to be taken for this. Inertia of direction. 
is a part of your motion anyway, this can be taken as a part of that. But it can be more clear in that you can see. When a body is moving in this direction, it will try to continue in the direction only. Even you apply a force in the opposite direction, before it stops, it will continue in the direction only with reducing velocity and then stop. Because it has the tendency of continuing in the same direction. What is the force doing now? It is only able to reduce the magnitude of the velocity so that it can come to rest. So the course of motion of this body is changed by reducing the speed of the body because of the action of this force F. Take another example. Suppose you are moving in a vehicle and you want to take a turn there over a curve. This is a curve suppose it is like this. The body, we have discussed about the circular motion in the earlier module. When a body is at this point, it moves in the direction. Velocity will be in this direction. If it has to come from here to there, that means move on the curve, you require a force to act in the direction. So, you require acceleration in the direction, which said the direction of the velocity must be changed. So, you require a force for that. If there is no force acting in this direction, it will try to continue in that direction only. You take the example of a stone tied to a string, you rotate in your hand like this continuously. Suppose any moment you stop rotating, what happens? The stone will fly off tangentially like this. It will take the course of the velocity there. So, if you want to change the direction of velocity, magnitude anyway force is required. Even if you want to change the direction of velocity, you require a force. Otherwise, it will try to continue in the same direction. This is the best example that you can take off in that. You will be seeing also tires of uh, 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 wheels are there. For example, tires of the wheels are there when a vehicle is moving there. You will see mud will be clinging to the tires and it will be coming up tangentially up there. When the wheel is like this, when the mud comes up, it will, as the wheel turns like this, the mud will be flying off like that tangentially. Because it will come cling here. After it comes, it will get detached from the wheel, therefore it will continue only in the tangential direction like that. It flies off tangentially like that. So that is because of the inertness to continue in its own direction there. Inertia of direction also becomes important. We give a standard example which all of you must be knowing, just to clear, clearly tell what the difference between these three are, how to understand this inertia. Suppose you are in a bus, sitting in a bus. The bus is at rest, you are at rest. Suppose the driver comes and sits, suddenly he starts there. If you are sitting comfortably, all right. Suppose you are standing, where you immediately feel back like that, feel a force like that behind you, as if you are being pushed back. Actually, you are not pushed backwards. Your feet are pushed forward. The force that is moving the vehicle is moving the bottom of the ground of the bus and your feet are on that. So, your feet are moving, your body still is unaware of this, is trying to continue in the state of rest, therefore it will be feeling a fall back. After some time it will get adjusted, you will get mentally set up that you are also moving, well you will get set adjusted to that immediately. Then afterwards it is moving and you will be moving along with it. Whenever there is a change in velocity taking place, you will also feel, be feeling a jerk there on the body. This is because of the inertia of rest initial, initially. When the bus starts suddenly, you will feel a fall backwards due to inertia of rest. Take the other case. You are going the running bus. Bus is running already. You are standing there. The driver puts a sudden brake there. All of you will fall forward like that. What makes you fall like that? Nobody is pushing from behind actually. In fact, you wanted to stop from falling there probably. That's why you put a brake. There is a, bull, there is a big boulder there. He wanted to stop there. So, when he stopped, what happened? You were pushed forward as if. Actually, your feet have come to rest there. What has happened is, your feet have come to rest with the brake. But the remaining part of the body is continuing in motion. Therefore, you are feeling relatively pushed forward. So, this is due to inertia of motion. The state of motion is persisting in your body, upper part of the body continuously, even before uh, even before coming to rest there, even when the feet have come to rest there. So, this is what is meant by the inertia of rest, the motion here. 
Similarly, think of inertia of direction now. Suppose you are sitting in the same vehicle, again the example is same, the bus takes a turn over a curve. Then you will all feel like this, you will fall like that. And of course, the window is there, the seats are there, so this will push you like this, so reaction will from there will be there, will be able to protect you back. If there is an open vehicle, only ground is the floor is there, open lorry like thing is there, if you just take a turn, you are standing there, you will fall down, definitely with that side. This is because the same thing as the mud particles doing here, the stone type is thing happening there. So what they are doing, what is happening there is, you are continuing a particular direction with the velocity and the course is changed. Whereas the lower part of the body, this, this, the feet etc. are trying to take a turn, the force has applied on them to make the rotation there, steering has made the ground to, to the platform of the bus to rotate, whereas the upper part of your body, which is away from the platform there, is still trying to continue in that direction, so you feel as if you have been pushed like that. This is what is meant by a, a inertia of direction, which is responsible for this experience there. So all these things will tell us, the inertia is an inherent property of the materials, it is because of the mass. The more the mass, the more will be the inertia and you find if there is the inertia, a greater external force is also required to change the, direct, the, the course of the motion or rest of the body. So that is what is meant by the Newton's first law. So clearly speaking here, Newton's first law has two important things to tell us. It will tell us why the body is at rest, why the body is in motion. It will tell us what makes the body to change the course of its motion? Both are told here. The lines in behind, behind this is that there is something called inertia. When a body is at rest, it means there should be net force acting on the body zero, like what I said earlier. When the body is in motion with constant velocity, once again net force on the body must be equal to zero. When the body is going to change its course of action, it requires an external force there, definitely. And the greater the inertia, the greater is the force required and inertia of the body is directly dependent on the mass of the body. These are the various aspects that we come across. Take some examples to understand them. You switch off the fan, there is, fan is going on there, suppose, and switch off the fan there. Power is stopped. Immediately the blades will not come to rest. The speed will reduce, all right. It rotates slower, 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 and then ultimately stops. Why is it happening like that? Because the inertia of motion that is there while it was moving is still continuing even though the power is switched off, that motion is there, but there is friction inside, so slowly velocity is reduced and it takes some time for it to come to rest. So the opposing force is there, even that friction is there even when the fan is rotating, but the electrical uh, power that is supplied here is compensating that and doing work there, rotating the fan with constant speed. So there is an example of inertia once again coming there and the force that is involved there. Another example we can say, when you want to dust a carpet, what we do? We just jerk it like this. Suppose you want just to jerk a towel is that in the mud, immediately you will take it and say like that. It falls down there, immediately jerk like this. What are you doing in jerking there? You are trying to apply a force in such a way that the jerking makes the towel suddenly come out. The dust particles which are there with the carpet or the towel, whatever it is, will remain there itself. Towel is pushed off or pulled out from there. Some magician tricks also will be shown on the uh, tables like that. They keep a coin on a glass. There will be a glass like this on a table. They keep a coin. A small thin paper will be there. Without touching the coin, the coin can, the paper can be removed. Yes, it can be removed by just Push, jerking it like that, the inertia of the rest of the coin will make the coin remain there only. The paper is removed, coin falls into the glass there. These tricks are seen generally and this is not a very great trick as anyway for anybody who is studying Newton's laws of motion there. So that is another example. Like this, any number of examples can be given, but one should know the principle behind that. The principle is that the force. Force is that which can make the body 
set into motion. Force is that which can make the body change its course of motion. Force is that which can change the velocity of the body. Force is that which can do work on the body. Force is that, that, that which can do all these things. All that is given in one sentence in Newton's first law. So, this is Newton's first law of motion. Thank you.